Hello world, welcome back to the Razer RC and I'm super excited to bring to you a brand new kit on the channel. This is the Schumacher Cougar LD2, that stands for Laydown 2, so uh, this is an update to their regular Cougar Laydown that got released oh, probably two, two and a half years ago, something like that, and just got released uh, like a day or two ago. It's really, really a brand new kit for hot off the presses. Just came over from the UK and I'm super excited to bring this to you. I got mine from Discount RC Store, I've been working with them for the last uh, year or two. Uh, great, great, great company. Pretty much carry the full line of Schumacher parts, whether you want the on-road, the off-road, uh, accessories, kits, uh, free shipping, $50 or more on any order. Excellent, excellent company. Um, really easy to use website as well. Big fan of theirs. And then they're also located centrally, kind of in that Michigan area. So stuff comes super fast, pretty much anywhere throughout the country. I'm in, I'm all the way over on the West Coast. I'm in California and it gets to me in two days. I don't know how they do that, but super fast shipping and it's free over orders of $50 or more. Now the Cougar does come in two different versions, a mod spec and a stock spec. Obviously I picked up the stock spec version. Uh, essentially, you know, this is going to be for people that want to run in like a limited power class, any sort of spec class where you're limited on what size motors and stuff, uh, whereas the mod is generally for, you know, those super fast, uh, high powered motors. So I'll take a quick look at the box here. LD2, lay down two. So Cougar is your two wheel drive line of vehicles. Um, you know, Schumacher has been doing racing for decades. Uh, and this is just kind of their latest version. It has a lot of updates to the whole Cougar lineup. Uh, as you can see, Schumacher is based out of the UK. Some little instructions, um, a little bit of information on the difference between the stock spec and the regular version. The stock spec does come with carbon filled transmission housings to lighten it up a bit. Uh, slipper lockout right there, you can see, uh, basically provides some lighter weight on uh, the rotating mass of the transmission uh, gives you a little more power that way carbon fiber chassis drops a ton of weight uh, all the way there at the bottom alloy lay shaft i think the mod version is steel carbon fiber motor plate the regular version is going to be aluminum and then an ultra light uh, body shell which definitely helps to lower the weight uh, of the vehicle because you don't have all that mass all the way at the top where the body sits Quick look at the back. So there are a lot of updates to this kit. A lot of improvements over the regular laydown. A pretty significant amount of changes. Uh, some basic stuff does come with hex wheels, I believe. Gold wing wishbones have not changed. The front camber, uh, basically ball studs are captured there. No change there. Um, shocks are pretty much identical to before. So you can see something new here. So they basically redesigned the entire front end. We'll talk about that as we go through the parts. Uh, big bore shocks did not change. Steering hubs did not change. Uh, chassis did change. Does have different positions for your ESC plate there. Uh, basically the front end also mounts a little bit differently. They have sort of an extendable uh, chassis to get different length chassis with just basically one aluminum piece or one carbon fiber piece. Pretty interesting, you know, sort of a zero and minus five wheelbase version. Steering has changed uh, quite a bit, including this top plate here or top deck here. Chassis rails are different. Battery mount is different. Uh, as I mentioned, chassis is different. Um, rear end is fairly similar to before. They did change the wing mount. Uh, they did change the drive shafts, the CVDs, or I think they're actually CVAs, but they call them CVDs. Um, and then, yeah, pretty much that's it. I think they use larger uh, bearings in the rear hubs. I don't really see anything about uh, them saying that the rear hubs have changed, but uh, they did mention that uh, from Schumacher. So yeah, let's take a look inside the box crack this thing open and there are no seals or anything on these boxes so uh that's just kind of a schumacher thing parts bag a looks like turnbuckles front uh wishbones or a arms you know the british kind of have a different terminology for all these parts but i'll, I'll use kind of the american version uh what are these no idea what those are. They look like little, I don't know. No idea what those are. Wing mounts, not really sure. Uh, front spindles, it looks like. Top plate. Uh, here's that new 
bottom plate, which is basically extensible. So something different with Schumacher from other brands is, you know, they like to go uh, still with the flat chassis. So makes it nice for you if you're going to make it out of carbon fiber. And then a lot of other companies use an aluminum plate with a kick up built into the aluminum. But uh, Schumacher still goes with the single flat chassis carbon fiber, as you can see here on the stock spec. Super nice, high quality. So as a result, you end up with the kick up basically in this plastic plate up front. Uh, it does have different shims, so you kind of raise and lower the hinge pin brace. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, so this looks like basically the front end. Looks like uh, some of the steering components here as well. The turnbuckles. Bearings are going to be rubber shielded. Uh, and yeah, these are kind of the hinge pins, kind of the bronze. Uh, copper color type thing. I believe they're steel. Maybe aluminum. Here's a lightweight body. Seems reasonably thick still, so it's not like super crazy thin. Uh, they did change the body, so glad to see that. I was not a big fan of kind of that droopy window look on the old Cougar laydown. This does look a little sleeker. This does look a little bit nicer. Um, so they did update that. Wheels include in the box, which is always really nice. I believe these are dirt wheels so they also make slim wheels which are going to be a little bit different uh, from my understanding basically the cougars uh, come with kind of a astroturf i would guess like kind of an outdoor astroturf style uh, setup and parts so maybe some changes you'll want to make if you want to run uh, on carpet which is going to be super high grip or on dirt which is going to be kind of the lowest grip so wheels are fairly flexible Here's the wing, looks the same as before. I think no change there. And then we've got this bag here. It looks like uh, steps 15 through 18. So you got the side guards, you got the shocks which have not changed. Schumacher shocks are definitely different. Uh, they got kind of this tapered uh, spring look thing. So they're incompatible with any other brand springs. Um, I think I find a little bit strange, but uh, that's how they like to do it. Rear hexes or front hexes do uh, attach a little bit differently. They use actually like these O-rings to hold in the drive pins. Pretty interesting. Here's a little, I don't know what this is, some sort of insert or a spacer there. What else we got? It looks like shock pars, shock caps, shock uh, cups there. So yep, yeah, that's what we got in this bag of bags here you got the spur gear with the lockout on the stock spec version looks like rear a arms or rear arms if you like to call it uh it does come with a gear differential including i think a plastic uh set of uh what do you call them like gear pins uh transmission case here so the carbon fiber transmission on the stock spec, pretty nice. They did update the idler gear. So the idler gear is now a machined, I think Delrin, uh, a little bit stronger than before. The old plastic ones could break on you. Here are the new 90 degree drive shafts or CVAs. Not sure why they're called 90 degrees. I think the way they mount on is slightly different. Um, yeah, interesting. I believe that frees it up a little bit more from what I understand on the 90 degree thing, the phasing or something. I don't really know, but um, that is a change they made. And I think you can still probably use the old CVAs. Adjustable diff insert so you can raise and lower the diff on your transmission. Really nice. So yeah, that's the whole transmission basically. And drive shafts, rear end. Here we go, bag part C. Uh, let's see what we got going on in here. It looks like, what is this? Hmm, I'm not sure what this carbon fiber piece is. Oh, that's the motor plate. Uh, so you got more parts of the transmission, it looks like. Um, it does use this S2 material for the shock towers. Here's the gear differential, uh, plastic gear cup. Um, this looks like a composite or plastic rear camber plate. So yeah, the camber plates are plastic. I think plastic on the rear and S2 in the front. S2 is kind of like a, uh, I don't know, fiberglass Kevlar composite or something. Here's the machined uh, Delrin 
idler gear there. Rubber shielded bearings. Looks like the idler uh, pin or holder there for the bearings. Yeah, so that's a little plastic spur gear cover or spur gear guard. Steel uh, out drives there. And the plastic uh, diff cover there. So they do use these different shims to kind of space out the gears inside the diff, get your mesh set perfectly. Exact uh, steel wheel washers or wheel nuts. Um, here's more shocks, probably the rear shocks. These are the longer ones. A little bit of this, I forgot what this blue stuff is. It's like, I think the uh, ESC tape or something. Rear shocks, fairly thin uh, turnbuckles. I wish they would update those a little bit, maybe make them a little thicker. I have seen those bend. Uh, molded pistons in the shocks. They are all kind of color coded, I think, by piston hole size, like 1.5 you know, or 1.6 or whatever. Um, titanium nitride coated shock shafts. Looks like the little spacers for adjustable uh, kick up. I'm um, not kick up, uh, anti squats in the rear end. Uh, what else we got here? Anything else that we can see? A little wire management. Uh, system there's just little clips to keep your wires out of the way so yeah Schumacher uh, definitely high quality parts they are a little quirky I will I will say that uh, different shock oils greases looks like uh, 35 weight in the front I would guess and uh, 12k diff fluid for oh, 45 weight in the front and 35 in the rear or 550 and 400 CST or CTS same thing Looks like a little thread locker here as well. I think they changed the thread locker. I think the tube's a little different than before. Maybe a different manufacturer. Um, here you go with some of the S2 parts. So the S2 EC tray, S2 shock towers. So all your S2 materials are here. Uh, looks like the little shim, I would guess for the, I don't know if that's the transmission or what. Or maybe that's the front end hinge pin brace, hinge pin holder. We got rear shock options. So it looks like a different uh, shock mount. Uh, if you want to run the shocks on the rear of the rear arms or on the front of the rear arms, you're going to have different pieces, it looks like. That is my guess. A bunch of tools, Allen wrenches, a little spanner. I don't really know what this is for, turnbuckles or what, but. Um, yeah, the Schumachers have always come with this whole S2 uh, little hex wrench thing, I guess. Uh, pretty cool. Spanners is what those crazy people like to call them. Um, looks like the Velcro for the body. Window mask for the body. Some stickers. So let you know you got the LD2. And then the manual. The Schumacher manuals are excellent. Big fan of those. It looks like they uh, improved the quality of the material as well. Yeah, the, the diagrams are a little bit better than before. They seem a little bit nicer. I will say they made some big improvements in the manuals. I mean, stuff is pretty darn nice. I mean, they got all the parts here. Um, really much clearer diagrams and how the parts fit together. That, that was kind of one thing I was found a little ambiguous about Schumacher kits in the past is sometimes you couldn't exactly tell what was going on with the parts. The kind of these dotted lines and stuff kind of go kind of weird. But um, yeah, seems like a nice improvement in the manual. Hoover, they hired to do this. Uh, kudos to them. Looks like the different uh, positions for all the different uh, optional settings. So they let you know what the kit setting is. Really, really nice. Yeah, even a little labeling here on the side. I don't remember that from before. Maybe it was there, but I don't recall that. Um, how to put together the shocks. Some little extra instructions, race tips. Talk about the turnbuckles, the right and left-handed threading. Pretty nice. Usually, yeah, they got the full color exploded diagram here in the center. So you can see all the parts, all the parts numbers. That was one thing I wish they had done in the past. They don't really label the parts in the diagram. Um, you have to basically go to this uh, centerfold section and find the part numbers directly here. But they do show you all the optional parts as well. You know, even the wheel nuts, different versions, 
springs, etc. So, yeah, pretty cool. This is a really nice parts diagram. I feel like they also don't include this in the online version, but uh, that just may have been kits in the past. Nice little section on uh, adjustments and what they do, what front toe does, front shock mounts, right height, etc. So, yeah, really nice that they provide a lot of explanation on all these uh, different tuning changes you can do to get your car to drive differently, different rear hex widths. Really, really nice, even a ball differential option. So, as mentioned, it does come with a gear diff, which is going to be more uh, suitable to artificial surfaces, different option parts. And then here's the whole spare list part. And then a little uh, setup sheet here in the back. I guess this is kit setup. Oh, they even talk about different tire selections. So yeah, Schumacher makes excellent tires as well. Discount RC store is generally where I get all my tires uh, because Schumacher tires are the best, in my opinion, on carpet. Um, they've been doing it a long, long time. They've been making carpet and astro turf tires longer than everybody else so they do definitely know what they're doing and get things working so yeah that's pretty much it one last little missing piece i don't know what that was oh a little spare steering pivot oh that's nice because yeah you can lose these things um i have actually lost one of those in the past so that's pretty cool that they include all that stuff so yeah that's pretty much it schumacher cougar laydown or ld2 version uh this is the stock spec as mentioned the mod will come with the aluminum chassis uh, heavier, thicker body. Um, what else? Uh, the aluminum motor plate, the slipper, all that kind of stuff. Really suitable for the mod stuff. But for you stock spec guys, yeah, this is the one to get the Cougar LD2 uh, stock spec version. So, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to get uh, working on this kit, putting it together and uh, super excited and looking forward to this. Again, uh, if you want to check out uh, the Cougar LD2, check out discountrcstore.com. A uh, really great group of guys, and I think you'll be happy uh, picking it up from there. So, anyways, thanks for watching. Definitely hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons. Look for more videos soon. Thanks for watching.